Hello, everyone. I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library. I get to host these website chats. We haven't had one since June, so there's a lot to catch up on. Very busy morning or afternoon, I should say. So let's get started. A um, couple of things. Uh, oops. We record all of these events and you can find the most recent ones on our Vimeo channel. You can always find that link for each one in the Aspen e-calendar within a couple hours after the conclusion of each of these events. I try to get them posted right away because they're so newsy and we want everybody to get their news on time. So if you don't aren't able to attend some days, you can always go to the event in Aspen and click on the link and it'll take you directly to that recording. So I just want to bring you up to date on some of the training that we have planned for this fall, um, in addition to some events that are going on with um, the Federation meetings. Uh, I believe that Jennifer Burnell has been doing some, is doing some of the training at the Federation meetings. And those are all, I think they're all virtual, right, Tracy, for the fall? That is correct. Oh, good. And um, so that means you can tune in if you wish. Um, Jennifer's going to be doing a... Uh, sort of overview of the new Montana Memory Project um, interface. So that's certainly worth your time. We are also planning to offer that as a webinar to everyone in November. We've got a trustee training course that'll get started soon, maybe the end of this month. We haven't exactly set the dates yet. Um, Suzanne and I are just working on a few of the details um, that will have limited enrollment. Directors are certainly welcome to come. Um, and it's gonna be largely focused on uh, some ideas around strategic planning that get libraries to think about uh, underserved audiences in their communities. And it's really targeted to rural communities. Um, I think sometimes we all think that we know everybody is in our community, but there are people in your community who are not using the library that could be using it. So it's going to be focused um, mostly on that. Should be a really great um, course. Uh, and then we're planning to revive the getting to know you orientation to the Montana State Library course, which we used to offer as a full day in Helena, bring, bring people in so you could meet everybody that works at the State Library. But we're moving it to an online format and taking advantage of recording. These will be relatively short. Um, we're looking at about a half hour sessions with a lot of Montana State Library staff kind of introducing you to what they do in the state so you can kind of get to know people. So those will be every other week starting in October. For, so look for information about that. And be sure to save the date for fall workshops virtual. We're going to be doing the afternoon of November 15th and then the mornings of the 16th and 17th. So that allows you to, um, you know, kind of plan half of your day in training and the other half doing all the other things that you have to do. And I will point out that these are, um, we really insist that you come and attend live. These are highly interactive, longer format trainings, not a typical webinar that you can watch a recording on. So we're working on contracts for some really great presenters. And so don't miss that. And then the Director's Institute has been postponed um, until, um, Gosh, I don't have the dates. I'll look them up. But there, they, there is information in um, Aspen about that. But it's to the spring. So if you have not signed up, if you are a public library director and you'd like to come to Great Falls for for several days to get to meet with your other library directors and plan some big, exciting things for the future of Montana libraries, put that on your calendar as well. So lots going on with training, and then today. Um, Jenny has a commission update, a NAC update. She's going to talk a little bit about the evolving Montana library network. And Tracy is here as well because we're going to focus a lot on ARPA funding today. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Jenny, take it away. Thanks, Joe, so much for the introduction and, and lots of great training opportunities. It'll be a really exciting fall. Uh, we just really wish we could sort of try to get back to normal with some of our in-person meetings, but I'll at least look forward to seeing many of you online. Thanks for joining us today. As Joe said, it's been a few months since we've come together, so we have a bit to, to talk about. I wanted to start this morning just by acknowledging Kathy Mora. I know she was uh, uh, just a 
wonderful colleague within our Montana Library community and as a, a close knit community, uh, the passing of someone like her really affects all of us. She was a, a true partner of ours at the State Library. I recall visits with her in her library around um, acknowledging some of our congressional and legislative leaders in the state. Uh, I have memories of her at Circe Dynex conferences even before Great Falls joined the Montana Shared Catalog. Uh, there's been some nice remembrances on Wired and and so I just wanted to take a moment and, and acknowledge her and the impact that she's had on the library community. I thought you all might be interested in an update on the state library's status as a result of the pandemic. Um, I hope you agree that many of our services continue uninterrupted, although certainly we've had continue to feel the impact in our ability to meet together in person and come together for in-person trainings and, and other kinds of opportunities. Uh, you may have seen word from the state that most state employees are now working from their pre-pandemic workplaces. And that's largely true for the State Library as well. Uh, during the pandemic, we identified a number of additional positions that can continue to successfully work uh, from a remote telework kind of operation. And so prior to the pandemic, about 25% of our staff were living and working remotely throughout the state of Montana. We're a little closer to 50% of our staff now that have the ability to work remotely from anywhere within the state of Montana. And then the remaining staff are Helena based with offices based within the state library. And it's those employees that are now back working um, at least a significant amount of the time from within the state library building. Uh, we've also made the decision to open the library to public hours, four hours a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then during other times we're open by appointment. Uh, as you know, by and large, our collections and information resources are freely available online, and most of our interactions with patrons occur either via online meetings or via the telephone or email or other kinds of electronic correspondence. So we really don't see a lot of in-person traffic here at the State Library, even prior to the pandemic, and, and that trend certainly continues. But you will be seeing more and more of us in Helena uh, if you're coming to the state, uh, state capitol. Uh, one additional note about our COVID status, um, I have told staff that we are not authorizing any kind of in-state or out-of-state travel as we see the case counts rise both within Montana and around the country. And so we continue to monitor those case counts very closely um, and we'll look at those as we consider when we can begin to support in-state and out-of-state travel again. But for now, we're not traveling around the state for trainings or other kinds of events. I'm going to jump into an update from the State Library Commission. First, we have three new commissioners that joined us over the summer. Um, Ken Wall and Jamie Doggett are commissioners whose terms had ended and they didn't reapply for continued service. And then um, I think Many of you know that Connie Behe from the Imagine If Libraries took a position out of state. And so those three commissioners rolled off the State Library Commission and they've been replaced by Kristen Kerr, who is a realtor here in Helena. Robin Scribner, who's a former educator and rancher from Geraldine. And Peggy Taylor, who some of you might know from Shelby. She's a former school principal and has worked with the library up there. She is retired and has recently moved to Whitefish. So um, in case those names are familiar to any of you, 
Kristen and Robin have been with us for a couple of meetings now. Peggy was with us at our August 19th commission meeting. We really look forward to working with all of them. At their August commission meeting, the State Library Commission also had elections for officers and Kenning Arledge was elected chair of the State Library Commission and Bruce Newell will serve as the vice chair for the commission. And uh, as you attend fall federation meetings, you'll expect to be joined by um, at least one of the commissioners who've committed to attending the various federation meetings throughout the fall. So a little bit of a chance to get to know some of them who you might not be familiar with a little bit later this year. I wanted to take a, just a moment and acknowledge a, a couple of our long-term employees who received longevity recognitions at the commission meeting. Um, Tracy Cook um, technically received her five-year longevity recognition by the commission uh, at the, our August meeting, but we all know that she's been around the state for, for far longer than five years. We, of course, very much appreciate her service and then Jennifer Burnell was recognized for 10 years of service to the State Library. Uh, some of you will recall that prior to her work with the Montana Memory Project, we hired her to be a trainer with the Broadband Technology Opportunity Program grant that we had. It's really hard to believe that that's been 10 years ago now. The big announcement coming out of the State Library Commission is adoption of the revised public library standards, something that we've talked about now for over two years, it's hard to believe. And um, we finally brought that process to completion with the official adoption of the newly revised public library standards um, by the State Library Commission. Those standards will be announced in state administrative rule in the rules that are published a little bit later this month, I believe it's September 24th. The adoption of the standards is effective July 1 of 2022. So it's just under a year from now that those newly revised public library standards will actually take effect and libraries will first be asked the, to certify that they meet the new standards in 2023. So a little bit of time yet before they actually take effect. And then you have the, the year before you certify that you meet those standards. I think what we're really excited about here at the State Library is that the new standards really reflect a, a tool and a way for us to think about how we support library development. Uh, we hope that you agree that these standards are much less about checking a box and more about providing a model for how libraries can continue to think about advancing library services in the future. And our staff at the State Library are excited about working with all of you using the new standards to think about how we can support you in your efforts to continue to advance your services. So those are uh, available online from our website. I wanna acknowledge the task force that worked so hard to help us bring those to fruition. And of course, Tracy for all of her leadership in that effort. Again, look for the rules notice a little bit later this month announcing that those uh, standards are, are in place in administrative rule and to take effect next year. We'll also be working on some more official communication about the new standards out to library directors and library boards in the coming weeks. The State Library is undertaking a rebranding effort. We've contracted with a firm called Hoffman York. They're a firm based out of Milwaukee. They have an office here in Montana. They actually work with the State Department of Commerce on the state's tourism um, campaign. So they're very familiar with the state of Montana. Uh, we really want to address the problem that we see with people not necessarily understanding or recognizing the services that the State Library offers. We hear almost every day, I had no idea that the State Library did this. I had no idea that the State Library was responsible for that. Uh, and, and that's a problem for us because we want people to understand and recognize the work that we do. 
And so we hope through this rebranding effort that we can uh, better articulate and communicate the services of the State Library to all of our stakeholders, including the, the library community, the GIS community, uh, legislatures, state and local government officials, and so forth. So uh, be looking for more information about that process. It's just launching. Uh, it's intended to take about 18 months, and then there will actually be some uh, follow-up marketing coming out of the rebranding process. We intend to involve various stakeholder groups, so you may be asked to provide feedback to Hoffman York uh, about your impressions of the State Library that can help inform what the brand might look like. Um, I ex fully expect that we'll uh, end up with some kind of new logo and new branding that you'll see reflected in our products and services going forward. So that's a really exciting opportunity for us here at the State Library. Joe mentioned the Montana Memory Project migration to its new platform, Recollect. We're really excited about some of the new functionality that comes with the new Recollect platform. Uh, Jennifer was able to provide a demonstration to the commissioners at their commission meeting in August. That's recorded and available through the commission meeting recording. And as Joe said, Jennifer is gonna be offering some trainings at some upcoming federation meetings. So really look forward to the opportunity for you all to become familiar with the new platform if you haven't started exploring it already. Um, it's got just some really fantastic, much more modern technologies that will allow a lot more interaction between uh, the content and the users of, of the content that I think is really gonna improve uh, our ability to manage that kind of information and, and make it much more informative. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to take a look at that and, and look for those training opportunities coming from uh, Jennifer. The commission also got an update on the working of the new Network Advisory Council and their efforts to continue to advance and evolve what we're calling the Montana Library Network. Um, this was the first fully full meeting of the newly revised Network Advisory Council. They met with the outgoing Network Advisory Council in May, and this was the, the first time that the newly formed NAC could come together. Um, they spent some time uh, just in some of their organizational planning, including looking at draft bylaws and other kinds of organizational needs. And then we spent the bulk of our time together on the idea that we've been talking about, about uh, core services. And I'm gonna pop a, a link into the chat so you can get an idea of what I mean by core services. There is a definition there that the NAC settled on, which says core service or core services are library services offered by Montana library professionals that enhance the lives of Montanans by providing access, information and resources in a way that is relevant and reflective of community needs. And so I think part of the key to that definition is that it's the services of our libraries that are offered by library professionals to Montanans that impact the, the services and the lives of Montanans. So they're really those sort of externally facing services that we offer. And importantly, it's these services that um, through this identification and articulation and through the recognition that the commission made when they took action on these core services in August is to say, these are the, the services where we intend to invest our resources, be it financial, staff resources, uh, other kinds of commitments going forward. And uh, those core services that were identified by the Network Advisory Council and approved by the commission, they, they really shouldn't come as a surprise because they're the kinds of services that uh, we know we offer. Uh, their collection management, 
e-resources, Montana cultural resources, resource sharing, programming, and technology. Uh, these are the services that have been identified as priorities at this time. That doesn't mean that these services uh, can't and won't change in the future. Uh, but again, this is what we've said. We are going to invest our resources right now in, in these particular kinds of services. Um, so now the work of the NAC is to help us create an evaluation framework by which we can define what each of these services mean, what success looks like when we consider each of these services, the cost of delivering these kinds of services, how the services relate to one another so we can take a, a really systematic look at the services that we're offering and how they impact uh, the individual services and the services collectively, uh, how we measure the impact to our users going forward. And then from here, the Network Advisory Council will be recommending to the commission how we prioritize investment in these different services. To do that evaluation work, we are working with core service committees. And I know there's been a lot of communication from our staff inviting people to participate on those core service committees. Uh, there'll be more communication as we complete the draft evaluation framework and invite people to help us do that kind of planning and evaluation work. So look for opportunities to get involved. Um, while the NAC is a, a much more formal committee, sat by the State Library Commission, these core service committees are really designed to be much more informal. they are opportunities for people with interest in these service areas to participate, bringing your subject matter expertise or just your interest and your desire to learn more about these various kinds of services so that um, we can get as much input as possible as we think about how we deliver these services how we plan for future service delivery, how we fund these services going forward, et cetera. So I'm really excited about how this work is progressing. We've started talking a little bit about the idea of creating a Montana Library Network plan or a library development plan that uh, brings together these completed evaluations and, and planning documents for each of these services together uh, with a, a budget and an articulation of our priorities and goals to deliver these services in the future. So that's something for the NAC and the State Library to commission, commission to consider further. Um, some of the intended outcomes of all of this planning are uh, helping us to think about how we invest our library services and technology act dollars that we, we receive from the federal government. Uh, what kinds of funding we ask for from the legislature in future years, really importantly, how we invest dollars like the ARPA dollars uh, that we've received, how we can make sure that we're continuing to modernize our services and plan for service delivery in the future. So uh, a lot of groundwork to be laid as we move forward, but I think this is a really uh, fruitful effort to help us be much more future focused in thinking about the kinds of services that we're offering to our communities. I'm gonna pause there and ask if there are any questions before we start talking a little bit more about ARPA funds and specifically. All right, I'm going to turn things over to Tracy in just a moment um, to share some more detailed information about ARPA funds. But before I do, I want to also share with you a report that we've prepared for the legislature uh, about our, our COVID funding. Uh, overall, we 
we are required by some of the statutes that were passed this last session to provide specific reporting on our ARPA funds. Um, but because we're using ARPA funds to continue some existing programs, we thought it would be worthwhile to roll our reporting up to, to cover the majority of our COVID spending to date. So the report for which I shared the, the link in in the chat includes the LSTA funds that we've spent, some of our state dollars that we have, uh, the CARES Act funds, that we receive to support services and, and then how we plan to spend our ARPA funds going forward. Um, the ARPA funds as they were appropriated by the legislature were in uh, two primary buckets, one of which is a kind of a hotspot and broadband bucket. So we have the ability to continue the hotspot lending program at least through December of 2022 and um, hope to expand that to make sure that every county in the state benefits from uh, the hotspots that are available. Tracy's gonna talk a little bit more about some funding that we're dedicating to helping to upgrade some of the um, internal library needs to support higher speed broadband in the state. The other bucket of ARPA funds is an e-content bucket and we intend to spend about 250,000 of a million dollars there to help continue to enhance the Montana Memory Project. We're uh, intending to hire another staff person to support Jennifer. And then one of our goals is to make sure that every county in Montana has content reflected in the Montana Memory Project. And then uh, we have about $750,000 to spend on additional e-content for e-learning and Kara and the core services committee are working to uh, identify and prioritize how to spend those dollars. Again, we have until about December of 2022 to spend those monies. One other program I wanted to make mention of that's funded through ARPA dollars is a program called Newsline. Some of you might be familiar with it. It's a service offered by the National Federation for the Blind that offers uh, audio recordings primarily of newspapers and other timely comment content like uh, weather reports and job announcements, uh, reports from the federal government, etc. Uh, that's a service that's been offered off and on in the state and uh, with some ARPA dollars we're able to offer that service again. Um, you have sign up and register through the National Federation for the Blind for that service. So uh, if you have patrons who may be interested, you can go directly to the National Federation for the Blind or you can contact our Talking Book Library Services staff and they can uh, get you and your patrons pointed in the right direction. So look for more information from us about that available service as well. Um, with that, I think, Tracy, I'll turn things over to you. Thanks, Jenny. So I wanted to talk about a couple of different projects that I'm working on. And I'm going to actually share my screen, Joe, if that's OK. I think I can, I can do that. I think and you can. Yeah. The right place here. Ah, it's doing the fun little, maybe I'll just do it this way. So, what I really wanted to talk about with the ARPA funds is this project to improve uh, broadband and Wi Fi capacity in public libraries. And to just put in a plug, uh, Suzanne Reimer and I will be hosting two informational meetings. You only have to attend one of them. The dates are there on the screen, and you can find the links in Aspen. And we're going to go into a lot more detail with this particular project. We have about $640,000, and believe it or not, that only is going to pay for about 25 to 30 libraries to be upgraded. We estimate that we need more, closer to two and a half million to do all public libraries in Montana. But this particular project is designed to upgrade your networking equipment and your cabling with the hopes of both improving the reliability of your network, improving 
all places within your library and even extending outside of the library for Wi-Fi access. And then we really do hope and will prioritize libraries that are willing to invest in higher internet speeds. You know, COVID has really brought to light the need for faster internet speeds and how very important it is. And so we want to kind of support that work. There's a lot of moving parts to this project and a lot of work on our end to kind of try and connect both the this inside your library work with the outside the library work, meaning working with ISPs and you as library officials and just ensuring that outside of the library, you also have access to faster internet speeds. So um, please do consider joining us for one of these two meetings because uh, we'll be talking more about expectations and how the project's going to work and the role of the state library, the role of the vendors that we're hiring and, and what we would expect of libraries that are participating in it. The second thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to ask Joe to release a poll, just asking if any of you are considering applying for ARPA funds locally. You know, Jenny was giving you a rundown of the funds we received directly from the Institute of Museum and Library Services that came to the State Library. But of course, the state of Montana itself received a lot of ARPA funding, and it's available for a variety of purposes. The first round of it has really already gone out, but there's still more. And there may be an opportunity for you locally to get some of these funds to do work in your library. So we have contracted with the Montana Cooperative Development Center to help you with this. And the Montana Cooperative Development Center is an economic development organization. And what they are doing is that they are paying attention to the various legislative task forces and committees that are reviewing the use of ARPA funds that are setting up these grant applications. And they're kind of giving us and they'll be giving you information about possible grant opportunities. They're also going to be reaching out to you to talk to you about needs you might have. And I, I had a list of libraries that at the very beginning said were interested. And so I've shared that with Kate McMahon from the Montana Cooperative Development Center, and she'll probably be reaching out to those libraries first. You're also going to see a survey, though, just kind of getting a sense of where you're at and what your needs are. And although the specific purpose of this program is to try and help you get access to ARPA funds, whether it be through your local governments or through state of Montana grant applications, we also kind of have the long game of just understanding what your needs are and being prepared should other sources of federal funding come down to be able to help libraries. Because I know many of you have like, for instance, infrastructure needs that may or may not be met with these ARPA funds, or you may have these broadband needs that perhaps we could meet with ARPA funds. So you will be seeing e-bulletins from the Montana Cooperative Development Center with information about the ARPA funds. Um, for instance, they sent one out last week with a grant deadline that was coming up October 7th for some possibilities of funding that libraries might be able to take advantage of. So I do encourage you when you see those monthly e-bulletins to open them up and see what they have to say, especially if you could use some of these funds for a purpose in your library. And then also for those of you who are public libraries, just know that you might be called or contacted by Kate McMahon, um, who will be interested in learning about your needs and seeing what themes emerge and what we might want to do as we're working with these different legislative committees to just communicate the needs of libraries. So that was pretty much all I had. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of these two things because you're going to start hearing about them. Does anyone have any questions for me? And Jenny, if there's anything you'd like to add that I forgot, please don't hesitate to jump in. You did a great job, Tracy. I, I neglected to mention that in, in total, the State Library received, um, let's see, was it 2.13 million in ARPA dollars, roughly. That's a that's a pretty close estimate. It's in that report that I, I shared with you guys. 
So I think it's like 2.2, but I don't know why I think that. And yeah. I don't trust myself with those. And then yeah. Val, um, the email will be coming from the Montana Cooperative Development Center, MCDC. And Kate McMahone is the actual um, person behind getting information from you. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you. Thanks, Tracy. The one other update I wanted to share with all of you is about our Library Services and Technology Act five-year evaluation. And uh, again, this is mostly a heads up for you right now to be expecting to see some surveys and requests for other information as we go through an evaluation process. Some of you might recall that every five years, the Institute of Museum and Library Services asks state libraries to do an evaluation of how we've done meeting our goals that are tied to our Federal Library Services and Technology Act funding. Every five years, we also have to prepare a plan for how we're going to spend those dollars that aligns with some of the federal requirements that IMLS has. And then we do this evaluation of how, how well we've met our goals, and we use that evaluation to help uh, update and improve our overall planning. So we're working with a firm called Quality Metrics. Staff have been working with them to develop surveys and get information about different um, task forces and groups that can help provide feedback for the, the survey. Um, I want to thank those librarians that are involved in helping us craft, craft the surveys in ways that will, we hope, provide us really meaningful information uh, to inform that evaluation process. Uh, we'll be working uh, with them through the rest of this year to complete that evaluation. So look for more information from us about that really important uh, requirement that we have to go through every five years. And uh, it's a great opportunity for all of you to weigh in and, and share your impressions of the services that are being offered and the value of, of them to your libraries. Um, I did want to mention also that the next meeting of the State Library Commission is on October 13th. We had planned to hold that meeting in Missoula, but in all likelihood it will be uh, online. It, it's always available online via Zoom. The link is always in the commission meeting agenda. I imagine that this meeting will be uh, completely virtual this time as well. Quality metrics is going to be uh, on the agenda for the State Library Commission in October. They're going to give a pretty thorough overview of the LSTA evaluation process and also share some feedback with the commission about uh, the kinds of services that they see in other states. This is a firm that does this kind of evaluation for other states around the country. And so it's also a great opportunity for us to learn about parallels between our services and services that exist in other states. So if you're interested in that information, I think it'll be a great dialogue between quality metrics and the commission at their October 13th commission meeting. I think that concludes my update, unless there's anything else anybody wants to bring up or staff, if there's anything you want to mention or if folks have any questions. Jenny, this is Val Landron from SCOBY. Hi there, Val. Hi, it's easier to talk than it is to chat. Yeah, please um, feel free. <laughs> and I apologize for the ignorance of this question, but I mean, ARPA funding keeps coming up and how we can use it for our library. Well, okay. And I just want to be clear, I'm understanding this right. I mean, so our city and our, our county, we're a county library. So our county received a bucket of funds. I went to the commissioners and had a proposal of you know improvements we needed in the library 
And I was told, no. I mean, they had other plans for their money and I'm not going to be seeing any of it. So it still has to come. We still have to get final approval from the head entity of the commissioners, correct? I mean, there's no other resources that I have to apply for funding myself. If you're talking about the the county dollars, then uh, then uh, yes, it would be up to your um, county commission who has okay. final authority to to determine how to do that. Um, we hope with the resources through MCDC that um, there might be ways to make those um, arguments for funding compelling, um, either potentially for county dollars or for some of these other kinds of state dollars that are out there. And then, um, you know, also, I think we should all be keeping our eyes on some of the infrastructure dollars that are also getting approved uh, at the congressional level as well. I think also Kate Thank and you. some others were going to go to the Montana Association of County Officers Conference and kind of begin to advocate and lay the groundwork for libraries to receive some of these funds. I think Jenny Morgan had a question about mm -hmm. the subcommittees. Do we need people on the subcommittee for the the NAC? Um, so there are going to be core service committees for each of those core service areas. And yes, we do. We are looking for people to serve on those various committees. So um, Kara, Amy, Jennifer, um, I think Rebecca are all involved in those core service committees and um, are making more information available about how to get in touch with them uh, to serve on those committees. All right. Well, if there's nothing further, um, maybe we can stop the recording and I'll hang out for a, another couple of minutes in case anything else comes to mind. <laughs> 